Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, I am investing a lot of time and also money in understanding Lyme disease and its co-infections. Recently I found out that a very useful tool for diagnosing Lyme disease and also some of the co-infections is a dark field microscope. So dark field microscopy, even though university thought medicine thinks it's BS, turned out to be really useful to diagnosing those diseases. And in our video of today we are going to have a look on a couple of blood samples from people that I work with. They are all having either Lyme disease or some other Lyme co-infections and we are going to have a look on those blood samples. So first of all let me say that um, those blood samples they don't look very pretty. So if you don't want to see that stuff just switch on to the next video. So before we start I want to give you a quick overview about my new laboratory. What you see here that's uh, more or less the, the glassware and instrument corner and now we move on. Here we see my new laboratory workbench and now we are coming to some extraction device. Here in the background that's the alchemy corner, you know I have some high temperature stoves in there. And there we go, that's the, the dark field corner. This dark field microscope um, is really a, a very good one, you know, so I paid 5000 euros for it. It's not just some cheap stuff. And uh, here is the electronics corner. Yeah, but the video of today will be about blood samples from dark field microscopy. Uh, low magnification level. What you can see here, those rings, they are the red blood cells. While those white dots here, they are the white blood cells. So they are part of the immune system. While this thing here, actually, um, I don't really know what it is. I would like to know what it is. Maybe if someone of you have an idea, you, you see can a tell white me. blood cell moving around. They move like amoeba, but they are actually your friends. They are part of the immune system. So they are just lurking around and trying to find some intruders and annihilate them. Actually, um, once the white blood cells die, it really gets interesting because that's the moment when all the other bugs are crawling out of your blood cells. And that's the moment when you can identify Borrelia or whatever other co-infections are present. Uh, so those white blood cells, they live for about 8 to 40 hours. And yeah, when they finally die, you have to um, check your blood. Uh, so basically when you do this dark field analysis, you have to check your blood regularly. So not just once when you take it, you have to check it after 4 hours, after 8 hours, whatever, after 12 hours, 24 hours and so on, you know, to, um, to see when the action starts. Well, first of all, let me tell you that I do not consider myself yet as a specialist in those dark field analysis operations. However, in the future, I really want to get professional on this. But what I tell you now just it's just my opinion you know i'm not 100 percent sure of what i'm seeing is really what i'm telling you so just uh keep that stuff in mind okay let's start this video what we are seeing here huh? first of all we see here a white blood cell it's still kind of living but i think dying soon but the really interesting thing have a look here huh? especially when the video is running we see a tiny, very agitated, very vividly moving kind of worm. Yeah? And this, these things here, these are the spirochet. So you can identify a spirochet according to the movement that it has. If it moves very vividly, very 
agitated, very energetically, it's a it's a spiral head. Yeah? So this kind of thing here. Tell you something about the pleomorphism capability of the Lyme organism. So those kind of bacteria can exist in several different forms that look totally different. Huh? So what we usually associate with Lyme disease are those spirohead bacteria. So this um, long spiral bacteria. Yeah. But this is just one form of it. So whenever Lyme disease is attacked by antibiotics or by whatever kind of other unpleasant thing, they can transform. So there are different forms of Lyme disease. There are different forms of these bacteria. So what we can see here is one form Actually, we see two forms here. I think that we see two forms here. It's the biofilm form and the cyst form. But first of all, let me tell you about all the forms. We already talked about the spirohead form. Those um, long wound things yeah, that move very vividly. However, there are other forms too, like for example, the cyst forms. So whenever, for example, Lyme is attacked by antibiotics or other stuff, even their own immune system, they can transform in a cyst. And in this form, it's like a ball, you know, this cyst is a ball. Yeah? And in this ball, it's not attackable by antibiotics or the immune system. It's very, it's like an egg, yeah, so the, it's, it's hiding inside a hard shell and it's not attackable. Huh? Another form is the cell wall deficient form or L form. Yeah? In this form, it has no cell wall. That means it's not attackable, for example, by uh, beta-lactam antibiotics that, that specifically target the cell wall. Yeah? And yet another form is the biofilm form. So the biofilm is something where a lot of spirochets come together and fa f like form a biofilm. And usually these biofilms also contain some cysts. So these round shaped things. Yeah? And I think that what we see here in this video is that here, yeah, in that area, we see a biofilm of Lyme bacteria. Yeah? We see those long kind of spiraled things. Huh? And in the middle, we see these dots here. And these dots, to what I believe, are the twists, the twist forms. The thing is that um, I read some studies that in order to kill the bacteria in the in the biofilm form and also in the cyst form you need a way way higher antibiotic dose than for example in the spirochetal form and this is a really a problem when treating Lyme disease in those cells that you see here you can see some movement so there is definitely an infectious process going on because actually blood should be sterile. Huh? Um, I don't know what kind of species it is that is visible here in those uh, blood cells. Even though I found it interesting to incorporate it in this video to, to just show it, show it. So you see all this, this movement in here. Some blood cells seem not infected, other blood cells seem to be highly infected with whatever kind of organism that is. It's also from a, a person with Lyme disease, so I would assume that it is uh, Lyme or maybe some co-infection. 
the blood cells, the form of the blood cells um, should not look like that. It's just because they are agglomerated, so there are too many blood cells in, in one spot. That's why it, it looks like, like that. Well, normally they should be more spread out. I suspect in this video we are seeing two things. We are seeing the cell wall deficient form of Lyme and we are seeing the cyst form of Lyme. So this blood sample is also from a, from a Lyme patient. Huh? So I believe that those kind of things here, uh, they are the cell wall deficient form of Lyme. We are seeing here the rings huh? and we are seeing here also the cysts here the same so if I change a little bit the settings of the scope like I do now I see those dots here yeah? and they are indicating the cyst forms here too so that's why I guess we are having here the cell wall deficient form and the cyst form. And this is a dead white blood cell here. For the last video that we are going to watch, I have to tell you a little story. This is a blood sample of a dear friend of mine. He came to me looking for help. Why? Because he is actually feeling pretty shitty. And his story is that he's going from doctor to doctor since quite a while and all the, the doctors telling him, hey, you're healthy, I cannot find anything. Recently, he went to a very, very highly decorated specialist for infectious disease, a professor, doctor, doctor, whatever. So he has a lot of titles and he claims to be a, a specialist for uh, infectious disease. So this doctor made a couple of blood analyses and came to the conclusion that he is perfectly healthy. Okay, that's the point where that guy came to me and we had a look on his blood uh, with the dark field microscope. And that's what we found. Does it look healthy to you? I don't think so. Here we can see a couple of different bacteria. There, are, I think it's not Lyme disease what he's suffering from. I think it's something else. When we see these pearl chains here, this is a clear indication of cocoid forms. So like Staphylococcus or E. coli or whatever. So this he has some cocoid forms in his in his blood. Huh? I really do not know what this long elongated things are I have no clue about that you know they seem to to come out of the blood cells no clue what that is uh, maybe some myset form or whatever uh. um, but the best thing is that we uh, I gave him that video material and he went back to the professor doctor doctor whatever and the doctor told him this is unscientific and he should not waste his time with dark field analysis. So what do you think? Is the doctor right? Does that look healthy for you? I don't think so.